the quarantine tank has finished its cycle and it's time to add some fish. Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. As I continue to document and share my step-by-step -step progress with this new build, I've finally reached yet another milestone. I've recently purchased six new fish from one of my local fish stores. After purchasing the fish, I brought them home and placed them into a bucket. I did a slow drip acclimation using some airline tubing and controlling the flow of water with an airline tube valve. All of the fish were very active inside the bucket so I had to pay close attention to ensure that none of them jumped out. I will do a future video discussing quarantine tanks more in depth to help you decide whether to quarantine new fish or not. Obviously I'm quarantining my newly arriving fish so I'm personally all about it. But in this video I want to stay focused on my new fish. As you may already know I have black and white Ocellaris clownfish in my main display. They've both been in here for a couple of months and are doing great. In case you're wondering they still have not attempted to host the ultra rose bubble tip anemone. I have tried some tactics, but I'm about to try one more thing, which will be in a future video. Fail or succeed, I'll be sure to bring you a video to show you the results. Before we head downstairs, let's raid the kitchen and borrow one of my wife's glass containers. This is a case of do now and ask for forgiveness later. I have to move quickly here to avoid getting caught. I walked over to my cycled nano tank and filled up the glass container with some sand. Since the quarantine tank is bare bottom and I have several rasses in the bucket, I want to have some sand in case they want to bed down. I brought the sand downstairs and placed it inside the quarantine tank. After a 45 minute drip acclimation, it was time to put the new fish into the quarantine tank. Now most of my new fish are members of the ras family. Ras fish are typically really colorful fish and are beneficial to have in a reef tank. Most types of ras fish will go after flatworms, fireworms, red bugs, and other pests that are accidentally introduced into your aquarium. Most ras fish are hard workers and can be considered an extension of your typical invert cleanup crew members. Speaking of inverts, rasses have been known to go after snails and shrimp, so keep that in mind. These guys are notorious jumpers, so a tightly sealed lid is a must. They will jump out. If you're looking to introduce one of these guys, get a lid first, the fish after. Other than that, if you don't have any pests in your tanks, no worries. Rasses will eat meaty foods you introduce into the tank. I've been feeding my guys frozen LRS herbivore food, frozen mices, and frozen brine shrimp. I'd say they love the frozen brine shrimp the most. I observe these guys every day. I have yet to see any signs of aggression whatsoever. I'm feeling pretty confident I'm not going to have any issues. I set up the camera on a tripod and focused it on the sand bed. Out of sheer luck, the yellow chorus ras almost immediately took notice of the sand bed, floated above it, and then made a mad dash into the sand. I've seen my ras do this many times in my old system, but to get it on video is a plus. Here it is in slow motion. I thought it was pretty cool to capture this and to be able to share it with all of you. As for the rest of the fish, the majority of them immediately took refuge under the rock. This is why it's suggested to place some sort of hiding place inside your quarantine tank for the fish to shelter in, like large PVC fittings. For the first couple of hours, the Malinaris Ras looked like he was seeking some sand to hide in. He didn't immediately find the sand bed I had placed in the tank. Instead, he swam around the bottom of the tank with his face sliding across the bottom of the glass. If you didn't know, most Ras fish will bury themselves in the sand to bed down for the night, to avoid predators, or when stressed. In my previous tank, I've seen my Malinaris Ras do this many times and I've even caught him on video doing the same thing. Since we started off with the yellow chorus ras, I'll talk about him first. During the past couple of weeks that I've had these guys in the tank, the yellow chorus ras has consistently been exploring the aquarium. He's constantly picking at the sponge filter, the rock, and the glass. He's probably the most curious fish in here right now. His bright yellow coloration and torpedo body shape looks awesome. He's going to be a great addition to the community. Then we have the Malinaris ras. He grows much larger and has a reputation for being a ferocious hunter. Like the yellow chorus ras, the Malinaris ras also will go on a search and destroy missions for any pests in your aquarium. I have personally seen these guys pick up a snail and shake it around to rip the meat out of the shell. So keep them well fed and hopefully avoid them having to go after any cleanup crew members in your system. Also, introducing small shrimp into a tank where Malinaris ras has already established itself is not a good idea. Next up is the orange back fairy ras. By far the most colorful, most beautiful ras I purchased. This guy dons a bright orange back, purple horizontal stripe, a red head, and a blue underbelly. He reminds me of rainbow sherbet ice cream. 
Totally awesome coloration, but he's one of the laziest wrasses you can buy. His time is taken up by looking good for you every day, so he doesn't have time to go hunt around for pests. He's a lazy swimmer and prefers to be pampered with some frozen meaty foods. Moving on to the baby six line wrasse. This is a juvenile six line wrasse and the smallest wrasse in the tank. Despite his size, this guy thinks he's twice as big as his tank mates. He's the chihuahua dog of your tank. This little fearless wrasse is the most likely to bully my other wrasses. I've seen no aggression from him, but he has no problem swimming alongside the big boys. He's got a purple and blue body with yellow and orange horizontal lines. His tail is green with a hint of yellow. Another beautiful wrasse that'll go to work on pests in your aquarium. Here we have the Midas Blenny. This guy has the most personality of all the fish. He perches on surfaces inside the tank and backs his rear end into the rock structure so that only his head is sticking out. He's very observant and watches everything going on around him. When he swims, he looks more like an eel than a fish. He's got a yellow body with a bright maroon stripe running down his back. He has a brilliant blue rim around his eyes and is just a hoot to watch. Then we come to the baby flame angel. This little guy only lasted two days in my quarantine tank. After two days, I found him dead underneath the rock. He looked fine, he was swimming normally, exploring his surroundings, and eating mice. For whatever reason, he just didn't live. I went back to my local fish store who generously gave me another baby flame angel. How often does that happen? Usually you're SOL or have to buy another one at a discounted price. I brought the second flame angel home, acclimated him, and the next morning, unfortunately, he too died. I just feel like such a poor fish keeper at this point. Now, do I think the flame angel would have had a better chance if I just introduced him into the main display directly instead of into the quarantine tank? The answer to that is no. I think the same results would have occurred had I placed the flame angel inside the main display tank. Regardless, it's very unfortunate that I lost two flame angels in the same week. I've been successful with flame angels inside a reef tank for many years. I'm determined to have one again inside my new build. I do test my water regularly to ensure the nitrates don't climb and to ensure that the ammonia is under control by my beneficial bacteria. I did completely cycle this quarantine tank using Dr. Tim's ammonium and seeded the tank with beneficial bacteria using Dr. Tim's bacteria in a bottle. Other than that, I do do 5 gallon weekly water changes using water from my main display tank. I drain the water using the nearly automated water changing system from my main display tank. The water being drained out from the display is caught downstairs inside of a 5 gallon jug. So I'm really excited to get these little guys into the main display tank upstairs and start collecting phase 2 fish which will include 3 tangs. My plan remains the same here. I'm going to find 3 juvenile tangs and introduce them at the same time into the quarantine then into the main display tank. Stay tuned for more videos on the progression of my new build, updates on the equipment that I'm running. Follow me on Instagram, the link to that is down below. Hit that like button, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscription button. We'll see you guys next Sunday. Thanks for watching.